In a previous video, we talked about the transport of oxygen throughout the body. In this video, we are going to talk about the transport of carbon dioxide within the body. So we know that carbon dioxide is produced as a byproduct of cellular respiration. When ATP is being produced using oxygen, carbon dioxide is produced as a byproduct. Can you think back and remember which steps in the cellular respiration process give out carbon dioxide? Think about that. So the carbon dioxide produced in the cells need to be transported to the lungs so that the carbon dioxide can be exhaled out of the body. And for this carbon dioxide to be transported to the lungs, partial pressure plays a huge role in that. So if you remember from the video for transport of oxygen, partial pressure of oxygen played a huge role in transport of oxygen. Like that, partial pressure of carbon dioxide plays a huge role of transport of carbon dioxide. So we talked about this in the previous video itself, but the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is highest within the cells and tissues. Why? Because as a result of cellular respiration, more and more CO2 is going to be produced within the cells. That's going to accumulate within the cells. Compared to oxygen, the concentration of carbon dioxide is going to be high, which is going to result in a higher partial pressure of carbon dioxide within the cells. Compared to the cells and tissues, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is going to be less in the blood. And compared to the blood, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is going to be even less within the lungs, in the alveoli. So the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is the greatest in the cells and tissues and the least in the alveoli. This makes sense because this is the direction in which carbon dioxide needs to move so that it can be exhaled out of the body. And we all know that gases flow from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure. So what is the mechanism by which carbon dioxide is transported in the body? Unlike oxygen, where only one mechanism is involved, where it binds to hemoglobin in the red blood cells and is transported, carbon dioxide is moved by three mechanisms. The first mechanism is in the form of gas dissolved in plasma. About 7% of total carbon dioxide is transported this way. The next mechanism is in the form of carbaminohemoglobin. From the name itself, you can probably guess that it has something to do with hemoglobin. But around 10% of carbon dioxide is transported in the form of carbaminohemoglobin. The last and the majority of carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonate ions or HCO3- ions. If you remember from the previous video, we did see an equation where this bicarbonate ions were produced. We'll talk about that equation also in just a while. Around 83% of carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonate. And I'll also explain why this is very important, why majority of carbon dioxide is transported this way. First, let's look at how it is dissolved in plasma and is transported to the lungs. So as carbon dioxide is produced in the cells, it begins to accumulate within the cells. And the accumulation of carbon dioxide is going to increase the partial pressure of carbon dioxide within the cells. And the carbon dioxide is going to accumulate until a certain partial pressure is reached within the cells. Now at this partial pressure, carbon dioxide is going to diffuse out of the cells into the blood plasma where the partial pressure is much less and it's going to dissolve in the blood plasma. And the carbon dioxide dissolved in blood plasma is going to be transported to the lungs where again the partial pressure gradient is going to cause the carbon dioxide to diffuse into the lungs from where it is exhaled out. Next we look at the carbaminohemoglobin. So from the name itself, you can guess that it has something to do with hemoglobin and you're right. So what happens is the carbon dioxide is produced in the cells and begins to accumulate until a certain partial pressure is reached. After that partial pressure is reached, it diffuses out of the cells and diffuses into the red blood cells. Specifically, it's going to go and bind with hemoglobin. We saw in the video for transport of oxygen that hemoglobin contained allosteric sites for binding of hydrogen ions and carbon dioxide, right? So carbon dioxide within the red blood cells is going to go and bind to those allosteric sites in the hemoglobin. This is also useful for the unloading of oxygen in the cells and tissues. So oxygen containing hemoglobin is going to come to the cells and tissues and carbon dioxide is going to enter the red blood cells. So now carbon dioxide is going to tell oxygen that its stop has come, that it needs to get out. And now it is carbon dioxide's turn to be transported by hemoglobin. The presence of carbon dioxide nudges oxygen to dissociate from hemoglobin. And now carbon dioxide is free to bind with hemoglobin. 
So the site at which carbon dioxide binds to hemoglobin contains an amino group. So that's why the structure that is formed as carbon dioxide binds to hemoglobin is known as carbamino hemoglobin. And in the form of carbamino hemoglobin, red blood cells carry carbon dioxide to the lungs. And at the lungs, the carbamino hemoglobin is going to dissociate back to give hemoglobin and carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide can be then exchanged for oxygen within the lungs and be exhaled out. The last and the most important method by which carbon dioxide is transported is in the form of bicarbonate ions. We already saw this equation in the previous video where carbon dioxide reacts with water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase to give the highly unstable carbonic acid. This carbonic acid dissociates into protons and its conjugate base which is the bicarbonate ion. Now this entire reaction takes place within the red blood cells mostly compared to the plasma because more concentration of carbonic anhydrase is present inside the red blood cells. So again from the cells and tissues carbon dioxide is going to diffuse out because of the difference in partial pressure into the red blood cells. Within the red blood cells carbon dioxide is going to be converted to protons and bicarbonate ions. Now this H plus ions, they are going to stay inside the red blood cells bound to hemoglobin. But the bicarbonate ions are going to diffuse out of the red blood cells into the blood plasma. And in the blood plasma, the bicarbonate ions are transported to the lungs as well. Now within the lungs, the reverse of this reaction is going to take place. So when bicarbonate ions reach the lungs, they come back inside the red blood cells. Inside the red blood cells, the reverse of this reaction is going to take place. Bicarbonate ions bind with hydrogen ions in the presence of carbonic anhydrase. That's going to give carbonic acid which immediately dissociates into water and carbon dioxide. So now carbon dioxide is found inside the red blood cells in the lungs and that's going to diffuse out of the red blood cells into the lungs. So why is this mechanism of carbon dioxide transport important? Why is the majority of carbon dioxide being transported this way? Because this bicarbonate ions are important for the maintenance of the blood pH level, which is approximately at 7. We know that cells can perform properly only under optimal conditions. And one of the optimal conditions that cells need to perform properly is the optimal pH. So this bicarbonate ions in the blood plasma are involved in the bicarbonate buffer system which is helpful for the maintenance of the blood pH. Say there is a decrease in the blood pH due to some reason and there is an influx of hydrogen ions in the blood. So what is going to happen is because of this bicarbonate buffer system, more and more hydrogen ions will react with the bicarbonate ions and the reverse of this reaction will take place forming more carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide is then eventually exhaled out of the body which would then bring the pH back to normal. So the bicarbonate buffer system is very important to maintain the optimal pH of our blood. And that is why majority of carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonate ions.